runner. Trying to keep these fans into it. Utah State up 48 to 10 on homestanding UTSA. Roadrunners do have the ball, facing a third and seven in their own 28. Polite lofting it deep for Holmes. Fought off a defender, caught the football. The flag flies. The pushing and shoving may have gone both ways. We'll see which way the call goes. But I think they called this on the receiver because he moved the defender out the way to make a play on the ball. But maybe they don't because the defender never turned around. The defender around. wasn't playing the ball. Yeah, he didn't turn around to locate the football. Pass interference. Defense. Number one. Penalty is declined. Result of the play is a first down. Credit Aaron Holmes. He kept going and fought to make that catch. And hands the Roadrunners a first down. David Glasgow will keep it up the middle. Dives forward maybe four yards on the play. One of their better first down running plays of the game. Positive yards. That's what you want to get on first down, positive yards. Take yourself out of being in third and long because that determines the amount of plays that you can run at that point. And what you've seen from Utah State's defensive ends when UTSA's in third and long, they have stand-up defensive ends coming full tilt. Polite to throw over the middle, looking for Grubb. Cowden broke up the play, and it'll bring up third down for UTSA. And on that play, I think if you allow the slot receiver to get up the field a little bit more and allow Grubb to clear a little bit more across the field, he may have been able to catch that ball and turn up north and south. Polite over 200 yards passing in the game after the catch by Holmes. No touchdowns, two interceptions, although, as we said, one of them was at the end of the half. Play clock down to 10 as Grubb comes racing in. That's Seth Grubb on the far side. I don't know the line was set, but they let him get away with it. Polite throws it that way. Incomplete. Monroe tipped it, I think, out of the hands of his own receiver. And it'll bring up fourth down. And I don't know if that play had a chance before he got started. They weren't set. Grubb came in late. They were, Polite was trying to get the play to him. I just don't think that they were prepared for that play. And maybe if you're UTSA, you use one of your timeouts right there. Stern to punt again, this time from the 47 of Utah State. Spiral kick. Webb calls a fair catch at the 15-yard line. 32-yard punt, no return. And Utah State will start at its own 15, which I believe will be the farthest back it started in this game. We talk about field position. Utah State's had it most of the night. A lot of shorter scoring drives, beginning with that blocked punt that started the Aggies at the UTSA 5 back in the first quarter. We will get a new quarterback for Utah State. Craig Harrison in at quarterback. 6'2", 203, redshirt sophomore out of Grantsville, Utah. And he hands off on the first play to Kelvin Lee, the freshman. The ball knocked loose. UTSA has it. And that is a slobber knocker hit. You have to keep your head on the swivel. He comes into the ball game, does not understand that this is college football, and he gave it up. Watch this play. You've got to keep your head on the swivel. Boom! You've got to understand that UTSA is angry right now. They're getting embarrassed at home. You better keep your head on the swivel. You saw what happens when you don't. Nick Johnston forced the fumble. Brian King recovered it. Nick Johnston can lay some slobber knocker hits. And he laid one out that on was, that play. That was one of them. He may get the uh, sledgehammer for next week. Polite fakes the option, going to throw for the end zone. Cole Hicks intercepted. Willie Davis came down with it for his second interception of the game. Did they come down simultaneously? Because if so, the offense gets the touchdown. It looked like Cole Hicks located the ball at its highest point. Fans and players watching the replay, because Hicks definitely had it, and it is a touchdown. 
and both players caught the ball simultaneously. And when that happens, the offense is awarded the reception. Look at him locate the ball at its highest point. Yes, that is a touchdown. He's, he, play is a touchdown. He's got both hands on it, and then Davis ripped it away from him. And there was no signal on the field, which is why I, I went with the interception, because the officials came in waving their arms. But I like what they did. They discussed the play as opposed to making a call without everyone knowing what had actually happened. And I don't even know if they came down simultaneously. I think, I think the Hicks receiver caught yeah. the ball, and as they rolled over, the defender took the ball from him. Previous play is under review. The play is being challenged by Utah State. Utah State going to challenge. But again, based on our initial look, I don't know that there's anything to overturn the call. Cole Hicks, one of the plays of the year for UTSA if it stands. Well, watch this play. Ryan Polite gets his feet set. He gets the ball down the field. Hicks locates the ball at its highest point. Right here, he has the ball under his control. He has a foot down. That's a touchdown right there. Yeah, the ball doesn't come out until much later. I thought it was a bad throw because there ended up being two guys there. Hicks had position on the corner. The safety was loose, but Polite snuck it in there. What Polite did not do, which probably helped on that play, he didn't put a lot of air up under the ball because the, the safety would have been able to come over the top and make a play. And if you saw, he located the ball at its highest point. Third touchdown catch of the year for Hicks, the junior from Bandera. After review, the result of the play is a touchdown. Utah State will be charged a timeout for challenging the call. First timeout charged to Utah State, and UTSA will try to add the extra point. UTSA, as we told you, polite over 200 yards, now well over it with that touchdown throw. Chucky Keaton, of course, with 340 on the game, still in the lead. Stern, no trouble with the extra point, and it's a 48-17 to game. Signs of life for UTSA. We'll see if they can keep it going. When we come back, Utah State 48, UTSA 17. Back here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas, the River City. UTSA just got on the scoreboard. It's Utah State 48, UTSA 17. And after a personal foul penalty on the extra point, UTSA is going to kick off from midfield, which has Forrest and I suggesting that there may be an onside kick coming as you get a look at Cole Hicks's catch. And Cole Hicks locates the ball at his highest point. He's able to come down with it, get that foot down prior to the defender stripping the ball as they turned over. Josh Ward to kick off. And he kicks it deep. Ish. Jacobs takes it inside the 10. And is taken down inside the 20-yard line. So good field position for UTSA. There is a flag back at the 40-yard line, and now another flag flies. And uh, not pretty right now in a couple ways. Tristan Wade has got to control his emotions. He's a guy who was called for seven personal foul penalties last year, was ejected from one game. He's a great potential as a big hitting safety, but has struggled with those flags. You've got to be a disciplined ball player. That is what drives coaches crazy when you have a lack of discipline and you hurt your defense. You've got a Utah State team that's deep in their own territory, and now it's very likely they're going to get out of that hole and have pretty good field position. Offside on the kicking team. A penalty will be enforced from the end of the run. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on the receiving team, number 10. Half the distance penalty, first down. So Chuck Jacobs from Utah State got the 15-yard penalty. So they'll, it'll be a net of minus 10 for Utah State. And Tristan Wade got away with one, but he needs to be careful. 
Don't put your team in a bad position. I understand you're frustrated right now, but you cannot allow your frustration to take over and put your team in a position to get penalized. So Utah State will start this drive at its own 11. Up 31 with 13 and a half to play in the fourth. And after some of the backups only got the one play last time, thanks to the fumble, they'll try it again. Craig Harrison at quarterback. Kelvin Lee gets right back on the horse at running back, standing to the near side of Harrison. It's Lee again running left, and Jason Neal comes over to knock him down from UTSA. You see Joey DiMartino also in the game for Utah State in the backfield. And they're trying to stretch this play out, and what UTSA does is string them along and allow pursuit to catch up to the running back. They don't give them positive yardage. And this, these are some of the things that you can work on late in ball games when you're behind. So second and seven coming for Utah State. Again, they'll be home next week, taking on Texas State, a program with a few more years under its belt than UTSA, but also moving up to the FBS level. Harrison double pumped through outside, and the catch made there by Bruce Natson, who goes by JoJo to those who know him. And it'll be third down and four. And Travis Van Leeuwen makes a good block on this play to allow his receiver to get the ball and, you know, possibly get upfield if he's able to keep his feet. Craig Harrison, we should mention, is now three of three on the season, so he's perfect passing the football. Another guy who came out of Snow College. Junior College has produced a lot of these players. Third down, play action, quick out. Pass is caught by Keegan Anderson. He dives forward for the first down. Sophomore out of Juan Diego High School, another school, this one a high school that's contributed a lot of players to this Utah State team. And the Aggies out to the 22-yard line. You don't usually see a coach's son with hair that long. <laughs> Hey, if you're a player, your dad doesn't mind you having your hair that long. Kelvin Lee, the tailback, freshman from South Daytona, Florida. Kind of a last-minute recruit this summer, and now the play clock expires, but Utah State will take its second timeout. Timeout. Utah State, second timeout, a 30-second timeout. Their first, of course, was the challenge. And so Utah State will go back to first and ten with kind of that new blood trying to prove themselves, prove that they'll be ready to go if called upon. With Harrison, the backup quarterback, Adam Kennedy, who was set to be Chucky Keaton's backup, went down injured way back in the season opener. Well, these are invaluable opportunities for backups because this is real-world football as opposed to practice. You're not playing against someone that's used to what you do. You're playing against an opponent that's actually trying to stop you. So I like the opportunity that this gives some of the backups, and I like the fact that they're continuing to run their offense as opposed to being very vanilla out here. Give goes to Lee running left, and UTSA able to stop him. Richard Burge in on the tackle. Burge, a redshirt, soft, redshirt sophomore from Stratford. And you see Utah State nearing 500 yards of offense. Definitely explosive with several big plays tonight, both on the ground and in the air. And they haven't used as many screen passes as I thought they would, but they've used them at exactly the right time. Well, they hadn't had to use them. You know, I think if they would have had to use them, they would have. But UTSA has not been able to get that type of pressure to force them into their screen game. Second and nine, Lee again. Solid gain this time. It'll bring up third down and five. Utah State will go to the Mountain West Conference next year along with 
several other teams that are currently in the WAC. I can barely keep track of who's in what conference, but I think in maybe three or four years it'll settle down and we can start getting used to where everybody is again. Third and five. Harrison quick out for Van Leeuwen, and he's taken down by Wade. And it looks like they'll mark him short of the first down. So that'll be a call to the punt team, Tyler Bennett. And you see some of the youth. Van Leeuwen has to locate the first down marker and get beyond that so when the quarterback passes him the ball, if he gets hit upon receiving the ball, he has a first down. Bennett, who's on the watch list for the Ray Guy Award, is one of the nation's top punters. Hit 44 yards on his first punt. Grubb, the return man, fumbled it, but is back out there again. Awkward spinner here. He's going to let it bounce. And it bounces backward. Utah State trying to slow it down, and they really don't get to it until about the uh, 46. And Utah State will give UTSA pretty good field position here. Well, the, the punter is finally starting to get some work today. He hadn't gotten <laughs> a whole lot of work, so uh... he'd been he'd gotten a whole lot of work out with the net back there. But <laughs> so UTSA will start at its own 46 here, just trying to get on the scoreboard again and, and gain some momentum for next week when they'll go at Louisiana Tech. And that snap came well before anybody on the line was ready. Illegal snap, number 55 offense, five yard penalty, first down. Well, that's one you don't hear every day. We got intent to, intent to deceive last week and illegal snap this week. Well, I think the center was in a hurry up offense set and no one else was. Did he double clutch it maybe? I think he probably realized that it was not time to snap the ball, so he tried to stop himself in mid motion and then went on ahead and snapped the ball. First and 15 at any rate. Option pitch to Cam Jones. Had the block ahead but was taken down in the backfield with a diving tackle. And it'll be about a loss of one on the play. Well, Tavares McMillan got great pressure. He got up the field and was able to trip Cam Jones up and when you're running that type of play, you cannot get upfield pressure. You cannot get penetration because it defeats what you're trying to do, and you saw it on that play. Second and 16 for UTSA. Quick toss to Okacha out of the backfield, trying to get to the corner, and a nice tackle by McMillan again. Then his helmet came off, and he also may have caught his toe in the turf. And immediately the UTSA coaching staff is asking for some medical attention for a Utah State player. And watching this play again, Okacha gets outside. McMillan looks like he does get his foot caught in the turf. You have to hope that he's okay. And the UTSA coaches saw that he was injured immediately and went out to assist and uh, made sure that the uh, Utah State coaches knew as well. And that's great to see him get up and walk off, you know, by himself without any help. 45 tackles last year for McMillan as a freshman. And he's seen some reserve defense. summary this year. You look at the numbers for Chucky Keaton. Outstanding. 340 passing yards, three touchdowns, an interception. Ryan Polite has thrown for yardage. And we've had just a little bit of offense in this game, as you might expect. That's kind of the, uh, the whack reputation at times. That second quarter where Utah State outscored UTSA 20 0 is really the difference. 7-3 to three game after one quarter, but UTSA just couldn't get anything going on offense. I don't think they had a first down in the second quarter until the two-minute drill. Third and long here. Blitz coming. Polite steps up, and now he's going to go down. A big hit by Connor Williams, the junior from Ontario, Canada, and UTSA will be forced to punt. And that's a little bit of youth on that play. Polite has to feel the pressure. He has to understand with the blitz coming. There's going to be someone free, so you need to find a hot read and get the ball out of there. 
Stern to punt, and again, Utah State with two men deep to return. Brady and Webb, as usual. Webb will receive it at the 27, starts upfield, and gets across the 40-yard line before being taken down. So a nice return by Cameron Webb. And Utah State will start at its own 42-yard line here. And we'll see who comes out for Utah State. It's Harrison again. I kind of want to see Devontae Glover right, who's the uh, third-string quarterback who tends to run the ball. We've seen him uh, block a punt in this game. I kind of wanted to see a little bit more of him at quarterback. But Harrison and Kelvin Lee are out there right now. And it is Kelvin Lee straight ahead. Stopped at the 45-yard line after a gain of three. And I think Utah State is just content to run the football right now, run the clock, and uh, get out of here with a very good win and look forward to next week's ball game. You know, and their turnover margin hasn't really improved today. They've gotten two, but they've given away a couple as well. They're one of only four teams in the country with five or more wins and a minus three turnover ratio. It's them, Nebraska, Michigan, and Texas A&M. That's also courtesy of ESPN Stats and Information. And it's pretty impressive how successful they've been despite not winning the turnover battle all that often. Well, you look at the type of scoring they do. They score on big plays, and that lets you know they score a lot of points. Swing this one out to Lee. He's about a yard short of the first down. Recovering well from getting slobber knockered on his first carry. Well, I think he understands now that he's playing major college football, and although they're up big, you know, this defense for UTSA is going to continue to play, you know, between the whistles until the final horn sounds. I want to challenge you from now on, you have to get slobber knocker in every game we do. I have to have someone to get slobber knocker. The, the more slobber, <laughs> slobber knockering, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Third and a long one or a short two. It's Lee up the middle, and it's going to be very close as the UTSA line collapsed on him. Richard Burge, Charles Wart, and Brandon Guerrero were there. And it's going to be short, fourth down, and a punting situation. And now how would you slobber knocker me right now? It's not really a fair fight. Well, first of all, I get in a three-point stance, Jonathan. You're not a very big guy. I'm not. So I, this is the people's elbow right here. I take the people's elbow and give you the people's elbow. So that would be my way of slobber knocking you. Good to know. We're going to try to avoid that one <laughs> at all costs uh, on the Riverwalk tonight. <laughs> Bennett, high angled kick. Grubb calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 15, which is good for his confidence. We'll go to a break. Hopefully you don't get slobber knockered and you come back with us. Utah State 48, UTSA 17. Back here at the Alamo Dome, 5.04 to play. Utah State in control of this one up 48 to 17. And folks checking scores, why not? There are some out-of-town scores from today. As Polite dumps it underneath to Armstrong, out across the 20-yard line. In whack play, the game that they're watching, San Jose State taking on Texas State, which is a big rival of UTSA. And San Jose State has a 10-7 edge in the second quarter, we're told. And I like to play what UTSA just ran, you know, getting Polite outside the pocket, allowing him to get in open space, and that creates time for his receivers to get across the field and get open. So all of the little things that we see now, although the game is very fairly out of hand, it allows them growth and maturity as far as running plays in the future. Shovel pass back inside looking for Nate Shaw, and it was broken up in a big way by Travis Seafelt, the redshirt freshman from Sun City, Arizona. He read this one like a book. Penetration, he gets in there, he sees the play as it's happening, and he wraps up the back, and he's a big kid. And you love to see backups get in and make plays because it helps to create enthusiasm for them moving forward. Third down and five. Light to throw, scrambles to his right, keeps it alive down the sideline. He overthrew Okacha, who had found some space, but it was a tough play all the way. 
And it'll bring up fourth down. And I think if Polite would have made an earlier decision to run, he had some space. He very likely could have gotten the first down. So Christian Stern is certainly getting uh, a good punting workout. And he'll come on once again with Webb back to receive for Utah State. Lower kick than usual. Drives Webb back to the 35. He's got a lot of room, though. And he breaks it into UTSA territory across the 40-yard line where Scott Inskeep meets him. Speaking of out-of-town scores, there's some scores in this top 10 to keep an eye on today. Of course, Notre Dame and Oklahoma meeting later tonight. And, Forrest, you've got your eyes on several of these. Well, the Alabama-Mississippi State game is intriguing because Mississippi State is a team nobody's talked about this season. They're undefeated, but they go into Tuscaloosa to play against arguably the best team in college football right now. And Florida, Georgia, you know, the biggest cocktail party. Florida is currently behind, and you have to wonder, will Driscoll be able to outplay Aaron Murray? The Georgia defense has been under a lot of scrutiny lately, and you wonder how they're playing in this ballgame. Kelvin Lee taken down in the backfield. Farrington Macon just reached out and pulled him down by his jersey. And that'll be a big loss on the play. Credit Macon for getting into the backfield. The sophomore out of Corpus Christi Carroll High School. And this was borderline uh, horse collar. Uh, they could have called it on that play if they wanted was to. His, was think, his hand inside? I don't know. I think that because he didn't jerk him down very hard that they didn't call it on that play. The back kind of went down by himself. Second and 13 as we roll under three minutes in the ball game. Kelvin Lee running right, doesn't find room there, tries to cut it back. And gets back near the original line of scrimmage at the UTSA 40. That was a pretty good stop and go by Lee because he had no space running to the right. He tried to cut it back, but UTSA and their defenders were right there waiting on him, and that is when you get good pursuit. These are the things that happen when you pursue plays. Never give up on a play when it's running to the opposite side of where you are because there's always the possibility of the back of the receiver cutting back, and you want to be prepared to make a tackle. Craig Harrison may get a chance to throw here on third and 11. And he gets a big rush on it, lobs it to Lee. One-handed catch, and Lee has the first down. Lee sees the goal line. He can't get there, driven out of bounds inside the 10. The screen pass did it again. And once again, this is, is great play calling by the offensive coordinator for Utah State. He knows that they're going to bring pressure, and the back makes a great one-handed catch in those offensive linemen. We see the second and third team linemen getting downfield on the screen passes and giving a lane to their running backs. First and goal at the four is Kelvin Lee trying to make a name for himself here. Looking for his first Division I touchdown. It's Lee up the middle, hit there, and tried to bounce off it. Couldn't find anything else. It'll be no gain. Under two minutes to play here, and I don't know if they'll try all that hard to get this one in. Well, defensively, you want to challenge your team. You know, this is the last minutes of the ball game. Let's see if we can hold them in the red zone. This is the last part of practice every day. This is what you practice for. This is why you do it, red zone defense. Play action, Harrison looking to throw back at the end zone, incomplete. Tristan Wade on the coverage. It's the first incomplete pass of the year for Harrison, and it does stop the clock here. They were trying to find Brad Tyre in the back of the end zone. So third and goal from the four, and now the clock stopped. They pretty much have to try and get this in. Nope, victory formation coming up with 105 to go, so classy move there to not worry about the score at this point. 
And I think they threw the ball on that second down play just to get their quarterback some work. He's the backup quarterback. You feel bad for a guy who gets sent in and all he has to do is hand it off. Yeah, but when you look at it, it was a situational play. You know, we've got our backup in. You know, how often will he get to play in a situation inside the red zone, inside the five-yard line, or right outside the five-yard line, going in for a touchdown against an opposing defense that's coming after him? So you run that one play, give him that opportunity, and then you go to your victory formation. So they're going to kneel again here and just turn it over on downs. and That takes a lot of class to turn the ball over on downs because usually they're running the clock here for some reason. They should have stopped it at about 21 seconds. They finally do stop it uh, because UTSA. Please reset the clock to 19 seconds. There you go. One, nine, thank you. UTSA does have to finish it out, but credit Gary Anderson and his staff for deciding not to cross 50 points there. Well, it's a classy move by a classy coach, and I think he respects uh, Coach Coker and his coaching staff. They're a very young ball club, and they're still going through their growth process. And you have to remember, you may have to see this ball club in a couple of years when they've got a, a bigger allotment of scholarships, and they're a better ball club. So UTSA at its own seven with 19 seconds on the clock. UTSA making sure it gets all of its personnel on the field. Pass is deflected and incomplete. And that'll bring up second down when I think both teams are, are just about ready for this one to be over. Still the first team offense in the game, though, for UTSA. And Ryan Polite, he's going to go to 0-2 as a starter. But again, a redshirt freshman again against these two teams is a pretty tall task. This time it's a running play to Glasgow off the right-hand side. Won't pick up much of anything. And that ought to do it on the ball game as Utah State dominates from start to finish. And we'll walk out of here with a 48 to 17 win. They go to 7-2 and two overall, 3-0 and oh in the WAC. And they remain on course for a showdown with Louisiana Tech in mid-November. That's going to do it for our broadcast today. Thanks for joining us. Utah State 48, UTSA 17, the final to watch the entire game on replay or check out other games. Go to watchespn.com or download the app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For everyone involved in our broadcast, Danny, Garrett, Sam, the whole crew, my partner Forrest Connolly, I'm Jonathan Yardley. Have a great Saturday night of college football, the final from San Antonio, Utah State 48, UTSA 17.